Your tax rates in retirement are among the most important factors determining how much you can spend in retirement. And you might hear people suggest that you make decisions based on your current versus future tax rates. So should you contribute to a pre-tax versus Roth 401k? Should you make Roth conversions? So what does all of that mean? And what do you need to know to make some informed decisions. So that's what we'll talk about for the next couple of minutes. We'll go over why this is so important and we'll touch on what affects your tax rates and we'll consider some tax strategies along the way. We'll start with a quick refresher of why these tax rates matter before and during retirement or during your working years versus when you're taking income from your retirement savings and from other sources. And we'll look at a number of different examples. First, we'll start with a baseline of the tax rates are the same both before and during retirement, and then we'll look at higher and lower tax rates. It's important to consider other things besides just income tax. You may face other costs that are dependent on your income, so we're going to talk about all that as well. Let's start with this oversimplified example. Now assume that you have income from work, and for every hundred dollars of income, you can make a decision. What are you going to do with that hundred dollars? You could spend it or you could save it for the future, and if you save it for the future in your 401k, Maybe you can choose between pre-tax versus Roth type savings. So if you go with the pre-tax contribution, you take your $100, you put all of it in, and there's no tax due on that $100 of income. The full 100 gets invested, and over some number of years, take your pick, 10 or 20 years, doesn't matter, the amount doubles. Okay, so now you have $200 in your account. And if you take money back out, again, we're at a 25% tax rate today during your working years, and then a 25% tax rate at retirement, 25% of the $200 is $50 in taxes due. And that means you can spend $150 on stuff during retirement. But what if you chose Roth instead? Again, we take your $100, and if you put it into the Roth account, you're going to pay taxes on that, and we want to keep this apples to apples. So you pay $25 in taxes, again, 25% today, and so 75 goes into your account. It's the exact same investment mix as the pre-tax side, so the money doubles over however many years you want to say, and when you take the money back out at retirement, you have satisfied the rules for qualified tax-free withdrawals. So you get $150 and you can spend all $150. So what you can see in this example, when the two tax rates are the same, both before and after retirement, it doesn't matter in terms of this oversimplified example. The, the math is the same. It ends up at $150. You might be indifferent. Now, this does ignore certain things like Social Security taxation. How might your income affect Social Security taxation or Medicare premiums or other things on your return? But if we're just looking at the pre-tax versus Roth decision, you might not care which way you go. But the decision really does matter for a lot of people because the tax rates might be different. So let's look at that classic example of when you're in a higher tax bracket today, during your working years, let's say you're earning really well and you expect to be in a lower tax bracket at retirement. So we already went through what happens with the pre-tax contribution, no taxes due, it doubles, but the tax at withdrawal is lower. So it's only $20 at a 10% rate there. We're just you know using round numbers to keep this simple, leaving you with $180 to spend. But on the Roth, again, you paid tax up front during your high earning years. So only $75 went in, same as before. It doubles to $150. You don't owe any income tax, but you're left with less money to spend. And that's because you didn't put in quite as much as you would have on the pre-tax side when you, you got a reduction for your contribution. So this is why the decision really matters. You can imagine that as these numbers get bigger, let's say you had $18,000 versus $15,000 to spend, that $3,000 difference in retirement could be meaningful for you. And we're going to flip-flop those numbers and say you're in a lower tax bracket today versus a higher tax bracket, 25% at retirement. So with the pre-tax money, you double it to $200. 
but now you pay $50 in taxes. And when you withdraw the money, you've got 150 to spend versus on the Roth side, you only paid $10 up front, so you invested less. It was $90 versus 100. When that doubles, it's 180. You've got less than on the pre-tax side, but since you can take it out without paying any income tax, again, you've satisfied all of the IRS requirements, you end up having more money to spend. So once again, this decision of your current versus future tax rates is really important. So let's talk about what makes those tax brackets and tax rates change. It's important to distinguish between marginal and effective tax rates here. So this is something you really need to know if you don't already know it, because people often end up believing something that, that isn't quite right. So let's go through the difference between your marginal tax bracket, which is your last dollar of income. So with each additional dollar of income, it gets taxed at your marginal rate typically, versus the effective tax rate, which is more of a big picture calculation of how much tax you're paying on all of your income. And I think you'll find that the marginal tax rate is often helpful for making decisions because it might not change everything on your return, but it can make your income higher or lower. So let's start with the marginal tax rates. These are what you often think about and, and what people often say. They might say, I'm in the 22% tax bracket and those rates increase as your income increases. So if we're looking at a married couple filing jointly, you know, if they have income of taxable income of 22,000 or less, then they are in the 10% bracket. And if as their income increases, then they move into higher and higher brackets. So if we just take an example of 163,000 of income for a married couple, how does it work when you calculate the income tax due? This is federal income tax due and ignoring a lot of other things. Let's just say this is all ordinary income. So the first $22,000 of income gets taxed at 10%. So you can do a calculation here and you can say 0.1 times 22,000 or that's 10% times 22,000 equals $2,200 of income. Then we move into the next segment, which is 22 on up to 89,450. So the difference between those two is going to get taxed at 12%. And when we do that calculation, that's a total of $8,000 due. Then the next sleeve would go on up to 190,000. They don't have that much income, so we only need to tax the amount that goes up to 163,000. And by the way, they may get a standard deduction. I've kind of packaged all this into one little thing here. So that's maybe a bit uh, oversimplified or confusing, depending on how you look at it. But uh, they would have the rest of their income, the rest of their taxable income, taxed at 22%. So if you add all of that up, they would owe $20,000 in taxes. Now, keep in mind, they had $163,000 of income and they're in the 22% tax bracket. So what a lot of people assume is that they will pay 22% on every penny. And that's just not the case. The way it works with the US tax system is just like the exercise we went through. You pay at a variety of different rates to arrive at a certain number. Now, if you take that number and divide it into your total income, that can tell you an effective tax rate. So we could go here and say, if I want to calculate my effective tax rate, it's going to be this number divided by that number. Again, the total tax due divided by the total income, which is a result of 12 percent, as you see, about 12 and a half percent is the effective tax rate. And again, people often think that they're paying 22% if they're in the 22% tax bracket on all of their income. And again, that's not the case. If they were, for example, we could say equals 0.22 times the total income, which would be more like 35,000. So there's a big difference between this 35,860 and this 20,000. So uh, the marginal tax rate here, if they continue to have additional income, is going to be taxed at 22% until they break above 190000 Then they go into a different marginal tax bracket, but their effective tax rate is more like 12.5%. So the effective tax rate is often lower than the marginal tax rate because of 
what's going on here? You're moving up through the brackets. So it's important to know what's going to affect your income and your tax rates. And it comes down to primarily two things, and that's going to be number one, how much income you have, and number two, what the tax rules are between now and when you start taking that money out. But it's also important to keep in mind that different types of income or different sources of money can be taxed in different and surprising ways. And you also want to think about strategies that can affect your tax situation. So those might improve or make things harder for you if you take certain actions. And then we also want to keep in mind for married couples that when one of the spouses dies, the survivor may be in a single tax filing bracket in future years, which has much lower income thresholds so they can get bumped into higher tax brackets. So that's always important to keep in mind that one of you might die earlier than expected, leaving the survivor in single tax filing brackets. We'll talk about all of that more, but first I am Justin Pritchard and I help people plan for retirement and invest for the future. And in the description below, you're going to find resources to some of the things we're looking at here, as well as some more general retirement planning information. I think you'll find all of that helpful if you're trying to get a grip on your retirement savings. So again, your income is a primary driver of which tax bracket you're in. And in general, the higher your income, the higher your tax bracket. That's what is often referred to as a progressive tax system. Your income can come from a bunch of different sources, including withdrawals from your retirement accounts, social security, pensions, dividends and capital gains, and other sources. But you have to keep in mind that a dollar of income from a certain source doesn't necessarily translate to an additional dollar of income at your marginal tax rates. And that's because some of those income sources get taxed differently and they might have unexpected impacts on your return. And that's where things get really interesting for retirees. So managing your income might be a new concept to you, but you may have more control over your income during retirement than you ever had during your working years. So that opens the door to various tax planning strategies. Sometimes there's not much you can do depending on how your accounts are set up and the nature of your income and your resources, but sometimes you have quite a few opportunities to improve things. As just one example, you might be able to manage your income after you stop working. So there may be several years when your income from work stops, but before you get income from Social Security or before you have to take those required minimum distributions or RMDs, that may be a time when you can potentially have a pretty low income. So during that time, you might choose to take additional income, whether you do Roth conversions by taking pre-tax money and converting it to after-tax accounts, or you just decide to spend down some of those pre-tax accounts so that you can minimize your RMDs in the future. And of course, the reason you might do that is having a lower income in the future, having smaller RMDs might prevent you from getting bumped into the highest tax brackets later. It might help you avoid having as much of your social security income included in your taxes. It might help you avoid having to pay extra for Medicare premiums each month if you get above those limits and you face IRMA surcharges. On the other hand, you might decide to just keep your income as low as possible. Maybe you're getting subsidies for your health care and it's worth your while. And, and when you look at the big picture and project out into the future, you don't see a big problem with RMDs. So that's a different strategy is just to intentionally keep your income as low as possible. Now, all of this can get kind of complicated. So one thing to keep in mind is that you might not pay tax on any of your social security income, or you might pay tax on up to 85% of your benefits. It just depends on everything else happening on your tax return. And then some investment income might get favorable tax treatment. So those long-term capital gains or qualified dividends, for example, can behave in surprising ways depending on what's going on in your return. So you might see your taxes 
higher or lower than expected based on certain types of income. And so it's really important to research how all of those things work so that you don't get caught by surprise and so that you can take advantage of opportunities. There might be additional costs on top of those taxes as well. So I mentioned the IRMA surcharges for Medicare. That's technically not a tax, but you might think of it as maybe a phantom tax because it is a higher cost you're going to have to pay that's based on your income. So really you wanna look at all of the sources of income you have and look at exactly what that income consists of and then start making assumptions about how much income you'll have total and how that might affect you in retirement. And a lot of tax planning tools don't necessarily make this easy. So a, a DIY tax planning package is pretty good with the income tax pieces, but it doesn't necessarily look at things like IRMA surcharges. So if you want to really understand all of that, you need to look at the different pieces separately or maybe use a financial planning tool. There is DIY software out there, or I have software, financial planners have software that can help you put all of this into one thing so that it accounts for all of the different moving pieces and how one change somewhere can affect other parts of the plan elsewhere. When it comes to tax rules, you might start by assuming that the rules will be more or less similar to the way they are today. Of course, they're going to change, but you can't necessarily know what's going to happen. So you can say that if I have a similar level of income that I have today, then my tax rates might be similar in the future. Of course, everything will change with inflation, so the income will probably rise. The levels of the different tax brackets will probably rise, but you might be in a similar ballpark. That said, things can and do change. In fact, we're at relatively low tax rates right now, historically, and it's reasonable to expect that some sort of change would happen. The question is whether or not those changes would be big enough to make a meaningful difference in your comfort in retirement. So what you wanna do probably is run some numbers and figure out if there were changes, how big do they have to be to really impact you? And I would say be careful about trying to predict the future with too much confidence or certainty because it's really hard to do. We just don't know if tax rates will rise or fall or stay the same, or there might even be curveballs like somehow they switch to consumption taxes uh, as a supplement to or as a replacement to federal income tax. Not saying that's likely or not likely, it's just there are a number of things that could happen that are really hard to predict and model. So you're going to have to be flexible and adapt. You still need to make some decisions. So if you are seeing a tax problem down the road, it probably makes sense to do something about it. And maybe you wanna, for example, do some Roth conversions to try to manage your future income. But going overboard can sometimes backfire. So just be careful as you evaluate all these strategies. This might also bring up questions about rule changes. So for example, will lawmakers decide to tax those Roth withdrawals, which you previously thought would be tax-free? I seem to think that that's unlikely. Of course, anything is possible. What do I know? But there's not a whole lot of juice to squeeze on those tax withdrawals, at least with the information we have now. But if you're concerned about it, go ahead and run the numbers and see what the impact might be if those withdrawals were taxable and then see if there's anything you can do about it. So what assumptions should you use for your plans? Well, again, you might start with current tax rates, current income, and see how those levels might change. Are you going to have more or less income in the future? Then consider if the rules might change, if tax rates might increase, if you want to assume some increases, for example. And as you go through all of this, it's a good idea to use software that can, again, help figure out if you change this little lever over here, what happens to everything else over there. That makes it a lot easier than a spreadsheet. And of course, you need to revisit this periodically because you might make some assumptions with the information you have today. That's all you can do. And then you'll get more more information and refine your assumptions. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please leave a quick thumbs up. Thank you and take care.